We're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. So far in the month of October, I've had at least, I, I think it's more, four people come to me um, digitally or in person asking me for Halloween spooky game lists. Now, first off, that was people asking me what to bring to the barbershop bar event, which is a local event we had last weekend. And people are like, what, what kind of game should I bring? Uh, you want Halloween themed games? Another one, though, was um, a, a local asking me for a game to pick up for their kid to play on Halloween because they send them out as a younger kid and they go out like earlier, like six o'clock and they're usually home by eight and they wanted something to play while the kids were eating candy and everything else. Um, after the family was trick or treating, uh, there was a thread on X, uh, formerly known as Twitter, looking for horror game recommendations and then a really good conversation on Blue Sky about games that actually cause jump scares. And there were probably more. Well, we have talked about horror and Halloween games in the past. That was over three years ago now, and sadly, quite yep. a few games we called out then aren't so easy to get now. Plus, there are some great new games that have come out since 2020 that we thought were worth highlighting. Now, normally I'd like give you a link to the podcast and tell you to go listen to it, but it was our fifth ever episode, and I'm kind of embarrassed by how that sounds. But if you do want to see it, the blog post is still up. That's, that's probably the best place you can go and get a list of games we recommended back in 2020. Now, one thing that's important about this, though, is everyone looks for something different from the Halloween season. Like some people are all about horror and terror and they binge horror movies and scaring themselves and they go to scare houses and everything. Other people, though, are just all about a hey, it's a chance to dress up and show off or try a new cosplay or wear a costume to school when I normally don't get to. That'd be my oldest daughter. Then there were people who liked the cute side of Halloween and came up with that term spoopy, which for some reason annoys the heck out of me. And I don't know why. I just don't like the term spoopy. I guess I get off my porch moment there. So what we tried to do is is because this applies to games as well as people are looking for different things. They want light, silly games or they want to be scared. So what we tried to do is include a wide variety of games that would appeal to different people who like different parts of the spooky season. Now, as usual, this list is in no particular order. First up, yep. though, we have Shadows in the Forest. Now, this is a very niche game, and it's generally for younger audiences. But I think that this can make for a great Halloween experience game. When played in an absolute pitch dark room, the game takes on a wonderfully ominous feel as the mysterious shadowlings avoid the only light, an actual lantern game piece on the board. So I think this one is actually worth having to pull out and enjoy, even if it's just once a year. And that was Shadows in the Forest. All right, the next one I have, we actually just reviewed last episode. Uh, that is The Pumpkin Problem, which is one of the holiday hijinks games from our friends at Gary Gamers Guild. Um, this one, I even said right in the review, I wish we hadn't played it ahead of time. Now, I played it ahead of time because I wanted all of you, and one of the reasons we're talking about tonight, so I can give you a chance to pick up your own copy so you can play it on Halloween. But man, I wish I had saved it. That is the game I would have played with my girls once they got back from trick-or-treating this year. Now, this is a great one-hour escape room in a box style game. It's created with only 18 cards. It's got a nice low price point to match. Can you figure out what happened to the candy on Halloween night? Maybe you should play it before you go out and you don't get to go get candy until you've solved the case. Put that challenge to your kids. Well, that was holiday hijinks number three, the pumpkin problem. Next up, we have Horrified. Now, I've been a fan of this series since first playing it, and mm -hmm. I love the fact that they keep coming out with new versions. Now, this is not only a great horror-themed series of games, but they're just fantastic cooperative games. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the series started with the Universal Monsters. They then moved on to American Cryptids, and the latest release is Horrified Greek Myths, which we yeah. haven't gotten to try yet, but is high up on our wish list. Now, the first two versions are probably more suitable for this particular season, though. And that was the Horrified series of games. Now, looking back to our original time talking about this again three years ago, I had King of Tokyo on our list. Well, back in 2020, I, it still belongs on the list. It's still available. But since then, they've actually completely relaunched the entire franchise with a new printing, with new art, some rebalanced cards and new expansions that didn't exist for the original. So what I actually want to recommend tonight is what's called the King of Tokyo Monster Box. This is a big box that includes the core game and all expansions and promos, including the important for tonight, 
Halloween expansion. This is a great, light, silly, King of the Hill game about battling Kaijo. This, to me, is the game for those of us who turned into the creature double feature on Saturday, hoping for Isle of Monsters, but not Pride of Frankenstein. And that was the new King of Tokyo Monster Box. Next up, we have Psycho Babble. What's more horrifying than feeling the oncoming madness from the inevitable arrival of the old gods? Perhaps not knowing if it's that, or if you really can't trust your own senses. In this social deduction game of psychiatrist and patients, players struggle to find out who's been spoken to by the old ones and who is just having wild dreams. This one again this week proved it was a fantastic game mm -hmm. to play out in public and uh, in a group. Yeah, this was a big hit at our personal Halloween game night, and that was Cycle Babble. Next, I have a another kind of light. I guess I went for the sillier games. And I didn't even click in, but um, is Gloomy Graves. This is a kind of domino-based card game where you're drafting cards with two different sides to them that you are going to place into your grave. What you are is a fantasy grave digger on the site of an epic fantasy battle, having to sort out and bury all the various bodies. It has a very cool drafting system, features a little personal grave that you have to do to kind of hold on to your cards, and then a ever-growing mass grave in the center of the table. Now, this one may be going out of print, and it is on sale dirt cheap right now, direct from Renegade Games. I'm hoping Deanna is in the chat and can drop a link to that from Renegade Games. So you might want to scoop that up before it's gone. And that was Gloomy Graves. Now, I can see some people arguing that this next one isn't Halloween, and that is Alien, the role-playing game starter set. Now, while thematically... They may be correct, it's not Halloween, but if you're looking for jump scares in an RPG experience and want an all-in-one package, this is the one. Mm -hmm. This game is all about tension, fear, and monsters, and the beginner box is just a no-brainer to get that concept to the table fast. Yeah. The big draw here being that it's a complete game in one box. You get the full cinematic rule set here, the only reason you need to go out and buy the core rule book is if you want to dig into campaign play with your own characters. Yeah, the, the, the Alien RPG starter set, like just by having that, you can also buy all the cinematic adventures they put out, and there are a number of them. And I still got to say, uh, Alien is most definitely a horror movie, even if it's not set anywhere near Halloween. That was the Alien, the role-playing game starter set. All right, here's one that was on the old list that I had to keep because it is one of my favorite creepy investigator investigating a haunted mansion, and that is Mansions of Madness. This is still going strong. There's some A lot of Fantasy Flight games kind of fade over time. This one is still going just as strong. Uh, specifically, we're looking at the second edition of the game, and this is so far, in my opinion, the best use of an app in a game I've ever seen. You just feed it what you have, the base game and any expansions, and it makes up a scenario using all of your stuff. The app does a fantastic job of creating unease and mystery as it lets you explore the mansions on your own without putting the board out ahead of time, right? You get that fog of war. Heck, when you start most scenarios in that game, you don't even know what you're supposed to do. All it is is welcome to the mansion. Now figure out what the heck's going on. I really adore the feeling of exploration, suspension, tan, tan, tension? I can't say tension. There it is. Tension that you get from Mansions of Madness, technically second edition. And that was Mansions of Madness, second edition. Next up, we have a living card game set in Fantasy Flight's Arkham Universe. Arkham Horror, the card game. Featuring the same characters from Mansions of Madness, Arkham Horror, Elder Sign, etc. Now, this was revised in 2021, and I know the fans out there talk a lot about how much money they have spent upgrading their components. But this one is a great game for a couple or playing solo, even if the game can accommodate up to four. That was Arkham Horror, the card game, one I am so curious to try. This Anytime I talk about games for solo and two players, someone throws this one out there. Looks fantastic. All right, this next one I also haven't personally played, but I wanted to call it out uh, because I've seen people have a fantastic time with this game, and that is Betrayal Legacy. 
When we first started hosting our barbershop bar game events, there was a group of six players that would show up. They would get there two hours before the event started and stay two hours after it closed, just trying to get through Betrayal Legacy. This is the kind of game that's going to keep you busy for a long time. So what I would recommend if we're looking for a Halloween game is if you're in the middle of a campaign, make sure you schedule a game night on Halloween, but maybe start a new campaign on Halloween or make sure you time it so the final game is played on Halloween. Now, this one, from what I've heard and what I talking to the group that was playing, it seems to improve on betrayal in many ways. And I've got to say, overhearing parts of the story was fascinating. Like uh, uh, everything I overheard just sounded cool. And I wanted to like, oh, what, what'd you do What this? And I'm like, but I might buy it myself. So I don't want to spoil it. Now, if you aren't up for the full legacy experience in a game where you need the same group of players every week and everything else, there is a new third edition of Betrayal of House in the Hill, the game this is based on. Now, that only came out last year, so we couldn't even call that out on our last list. Now, this edition fixes almost all of the haunt-based issues of the previous edition and is the best version of Betrayal so far, though there are some component quality complaints. The, the card quality in the game is lacking. But if you're willing to overlook that, possibly laminating some stuff or sleeving some stuff, it is supposedly the best version of Betrayal at a House on the Hill so far. And that was Betrayal Legacy, or the new version of Betrayal at House on the Hill. Now, next up, this one's already been brought up in our chat room, and that's Final Girl. If it's just you, why not scare yourself with Final Girl? You're playing a female protagonist, and you are the last one left with the slasher. It's either you or them. Now, this is a massive franchise from Van Ryder Games, and I'll admit, it can be hard to know where to start. While there is a core box, that's not enough to play the game on its own, as you need at least one film to play. Mm -hmm. Or, if you're really ready to commit, try a series franchise box. Both 1 and 2 are out there already, with Series 3 on the way after yet another successful Kickstarter. Now, the most amusing part about this one is, as we're talking about this, we do record the show live on Twitch. We have someone in the chat room going, I've been playing through Final Girl while watching the appropriately same themed movies because Final Girl is not licensed. So playing the movies they are based on at the same time, which I think is a great way to experience that game. That was Final Girl. Well, it's not for me. Um, I have tried it a number of times. I don't own a copy, but I have watched a group of people playing Dead of Winter last Saturday at our Halloween game night. And because of the joy I saw them having and the arguments, but arguments all in good fun and everyone was still happy at the end of the game and the blaming of other people and the groans and cheers when the dice were rolled means I had to put this on the list, even though it's not a game for me. This is a semi cooperative zombie game in general. It's a cooperative game, but every person has a personal goal. And what sometimes happens is people decide that personal goal is more important than the group. Now, this is also the first Crossroads game from Plaid Hat Games, and it uses a very neat which way system that involves voting, a lot of voting. Like, do you want to do this or this? And then people are like voting with thumbs up, thumbs down and stuff like that. Now, personally, I don't like the hidden trader aspects that show up in this particular game. I mean, they're not in every game. They only show up sometimes, but I can't deny that the game tells a great story. And I can't deny how much fun that one table of gamers was having last Saturday. And that was Dead of Winter. Next up, we have the Zombicide series. Now, after 11 years, this franchise is still going strong, with so many options now, from Dawn of the Dead with its black and white art, to Invader with its supernatural sci-fi theme, and now we even have Marvel Zombies and things like a Monty Python hero set you can add to your games. All right, that was the Zombie Side series. Uh, personally, my favorites are Invader and Black Plague, but pick out the one of your choice. And from what I understand, they're semi compatible. I, I kind of wanted to like take the Space Marines from Invader and fight orcs in the uh, fantasy one. But next, though, uh, those are that is our thirteen main game recommendations, games that we think would be great on any spooky season Halloween horror themed game night. Next, though, we do have some honorable mentions. Well, first up, we have Boop. Boop, but with ghosts. Now, unfortunately, they only had prototypes at Origins, so we didn't get to take this home. 
Yeah. Besides cute new pieces featuring cats hugging pumpkins, there are also new ghost cats that move along the seams on the board and scare cats and kittens away from them. Really wish we could have picked this up, but unfortunately was not to be. Uh, next is the night cage. So on the weekend, I did a bunch of unboxings. Before our game event, I meant to play unbox the night cage and I just forgot in the pile. I just didn't get to it. So it's going to have to stay in the honorable mentions. Uh, this came from Smirk and Dagger. You and up to three friends are lost in an oubliette. To get out, you each need to find a key, then meet together at the exit, which you also don't know where it is at the start of the game. Now, the thing in this game is, is it's a tile laying game. Think like Carcassonne or more so the old Dungeon Quest from Games Workshop, where your torch only illuminates, illuminates one tile away from you. So as you're moving, you remove the tiles you've already seen as you reveal new ones. Now, the trick, of course, is the oubliette changes. If you go backtrack, it may not be what you saw the first time. I am really looking forward to trying this one. I am hoping to have it out at our event on Saturday and be talking about the game soon. Now, maybe we can bump it up to be number 14 on our list. Well, next up, we have Body of Evidence, Best Serve Cold. Now, while murder mysteries can be enjoyed year-round, I think tossing in the autopsy part of Best Serve Cold fits particularly well for a Halloween game night. Yeah. night. The problem, unfortunately, is this is just Kickstarter, and while you can pre-order it, there's no way you're getting it in time for the 31st, at least this year. Uh, next, Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters. I could not not include this. This would be on our list. It'd probably be number one on the list because it's the first game I think of anytime I think of playing a Halloween game, especially when I think of trick-or-treaters and kids playing as well. But unfortunately, it seems to be out of print. Now, what I was going to add that wasn't on our original list, I was going to say play it with the expansion. The Creepy Cellar expansion does a lot to make the game more balanced and less, less random, which to me is better for gamers. While kids don't necessarily mind losing all the time because of the vagaries of the dice, Gamers like to feel like they have more control over the destiny, and that's what this expansion adds, as well as some other cool new elements and stuff like that. But if you can't get it, none of that matters. Well, that was our list of games to haunt your Halloween game nights. Did we miss any spooky games you or your family love? Do you have a game that you only break out for its scare potential? Let us know in the comments or on social media. Yeah, you can always email me at mo at tabletopbellhop.com. Hit us up on social media where we can be found everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word, and that's pretty much everywhere. Or join our Discord at discord.com, sorry, discord.tabletopbellhop.com. All right, well, there's a lot of chat in the chat room today, so I did jump into lobby instead of yep. straight into our coffee break because we got so many people in here talking about yeah, their Yeah, we got to get these, these recommendations from our awesome fans out there for uh, the rest of our podcast listeners who weren't able to join us live. So we, uh, a bunch of complaints about spoopy. Nobody seems to like spoopy. No one uh, likes the word spoopy. I, I, we have one good friend who loves spoopy and spoopy things. So there we go. Uh, so yeah, Will Chamberlain says I've been playing final girl while watching the movies. Each set takes inspiration from, there you go. Inspiration from that's, that's better wording. than yeah. I. Have. So far they have played, uh, the serial numbers filed off versions of Friday the 13th and nightmare on Elm street, but haven't. Cool. Come close to winning. Uh, what else we've got here? Uh, he has, uh, they have the entire first series and just picked up a couple from series two. Nice. So first series was good enough to uh, reach go. out and try number two. I, I will admit, uh, like live right now, we have an opportunity to review these ourselves. I haven't said yes yet. Uh, solo games aren't really my thing, and I'm not a huge horror fan. I was trying to decide if it'd be worth it because our fans would be curious. Uh, Red so I got to say, I, I, I know Wilt personally and i agree with his game taste in most cases so i gotta say they're probably really solid games uh red meeple ryan says i was wondering i'm uh, not the scooby-doo version of betrayal i have not played nor seen the scooby-doo version so i can't recommend it either way i will say one thing there's no buzz on that game at all no one talks about that game so i i don't know if it was terrible if it was no one bought it the only people bought it were scooby-doo fans not board gamers who are on like board game geek and have podcasts I, I couldn't, I can't recommend that one because I've never played it and I haven't even seen it recommended strongly. Uh, Mage Gale is saying, we got halfway through Legacy and kind of weren't feeling it anymore. Uh, the new version of Betrayal has some elements from Legacy. Oh, that's interesting to know. I heard this is the, the, the latest version of Betrayal is the biggest divergence from the original. And I've heard it's great, but like people really complain about the component quality. Like It's got to be pretty bad. 
Uh, Red People Ryan, shout out for Camp Macabre from a local designer. Okay, cool enough. I don't know that one, but we will toss a link in the show notes. Uh, and Major Gill is saying the spooky games in our collection are Arkham Horror, Betrayal, Betrayal, Third Edition, and Skeptics. The last is okay. a co-op ghost hunting game where the ghost will show up, lock doors, and set fires. Okay, that sounds cool. Uh, Tex Daughters Love Betrayal, Mysterium, Zombie Dice, and Haunt the House from KTBG. Yeah, Kids Table Board Games. That one looks good. Um, Betrayal, everyone loves. Mysterium, that was another one. I just, I think I played it with the wrong group. I don't know. That one never gripped me. Um, I saw Tech and one of his daughters playing Zombie Dice at our event. So, yeah, that's a great one. There we go. Uh, what you, um, Major Kale is saying, not a fan of the Dead of, of Dead of Winter unless you remove the traitor. The game is hard enough yeah. without one. So Fair enough. Uh, I would love to hear Will Chamberlain's uh, feel on Dead of Winter because it was his copy that I played uh, originally and at the time. I know he was a big fan. Uh, I wonder Major if Kale that changed. Again saying, uh, Mysterium is great as long as the ghost understands their job running the game. Yeah, see, that's why I think I need to try it with another group. Fair enough. Uh, Roger says, play Death Cthulhu Death May Die. It was a blast. That was on our list five it, years ago. Yeah, or you know what? It, and it wasn't, it was fun. It just didn't live up to some of the promise that we were expecting from it. Uh, the whole, the, you know, the, the lack of legacy and, and things that it just didn't deliver some things we were hoping for in that game. It felt like a series of miniature skirmish games, which is not what I wanted. I wanted a campaign, I wanted a, a, an evolving story. Uh, Eggman Jr. is pointing out something that I know is true. The patchwork Halloween is the most balanced in regards of tile costs of all the patchworks. I've heard uh, that. Yes, that's 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 a, a common. Well, I guess I don't know if it's factual or not, but that is pretty much a common belief, at least that the patchwork Halloween is the one to go to. Uh, we've played that on the on the BGA version, not yep. not physical. And I did like it better than the original. I did find I was uh, the games were closer. It was more enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, Red and Paul Ryan calls out Nyctophobia for a Halloween game. Totally Again, valid. that's on our list. Yeah, yep, that was on our original list. And there's, on our list three years ago, but good luck finding a copy now. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, for for Nyctophobia, you know, the, the closest you can get is is the shadows sort of thing, you know, with that dark experience, although that's still not giving you the same yep. blind experience that you get from Nyctophobia. And, and to be fair, Nyctophobia, my copy got played on Saturday at our Halloween event, which was awesome. I got a great picture of everyone wearing the, the blackout shades, giving me the thumbs up. So, so yeah, it was out. It got played. But again, I, I doubled to this time. What we wanted to make sure we did with tonight's topic was talk about stuff people could get now, which is why I thought it was worth revisiting the topic in the first place, because so much of what we recommended then isn't available now. Uh, Eggman Jr. is a big fan of third edition of Betrayal. Uh, he, <laughs> given the, he won the, the two games they played. Uh, and then... Uh, Tech's youngest daughter always seems to be great at being the ghost of Mysterium. Awesome. Yep. All right. Well, thanks to everyone in there. 